Nailed it. Got it this time. <laughs> Nobody will know what happened. Welcome yeah. in to Just a Tip, a fantasy football podcast. We have a tremendous, fun-filled episode for you. <laughs> uh, <Love it>. Tremendous, <laughs> tremendous. Ah, uh, we just want to say thank you guys for watching us on YouTube at Just a Tip, a fantasy football podcast, and find us on audio platforms: Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon. If you'd like, subscribe. And follow our channels there. Be much appreciated. And share our tips with your friends and family. We got Matt I.R. Regan with me. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great coming off an amazing week of fantasy oh, football. Oh, yeah, you got an amazing one. Oh, yeah, 6-0, nice. baby. And one pick em. And you one pick em. That's right. Week 6 winner. Let's, let's run through yeah, that. This guy. We were recording on Monday night. It is Thursday night now. October 21st. Holy cow, this year is flying by. 2021. Week 7 is upon us, but in our Pick'em League, straight up, you took a gutsy stand taking the Titans e- over Buffalo. I... And you won in the tiebreaker? Only, only, yep, only chance yeah. I had. He uh, he went he went low with the points, uh, mm-hmm. the tiebreaker points, and I went a little higher. Made yeah. it out. What a game that, that was. That was a cool game. Wow. Uh, I can't. I, I thought Buffalo was going to win, hands down. Quite stressful. Yeah. But yeah, we'll get into the, the MVP on the season later. But uh, you probably can figure out who that is. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but we are going to get into our AFC uh, starts and sits. So any AFC hosting team. But as you all probably know, if you are paying attention and looking at your leagues, it's going to be a tough week. The uh, people are called yeah, just a Bi-pocalypse. Bit. I call it Bianza. It's it's ridiculous. Mm. Regan, do you have any strategies, word of advice for this week for the <sighs> takers out there? Oh, they need our tips back. Oh yeah, they're yearning for them. <laughs> Regan's got some guidance, All my right. man. I'm here for you and the tippers. Hold my hand and guide the tip me. takers. <laughs> I'll walk you down the yellow brick road, my man. All right, so. We all know, yes, there are six teams on by this week. Yes, you probably don't have a starting running back. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, and yes, maybe you had to start Case Keenum tonight. And the, your opponent has, you know, Kyler Murray or something like that. Uh, you know, you're struggling. That being said, guys, you, you have the best chance uh, of winning, you know, doing something amazing by setting your lineup. The best you can. And now I'm not saying go out and drop digs so you can grab some bum to play this week. But if there's any chance of you trying to make some sort of a roster, um, in, in doing so too, is if like don't leave a skilled position empty. Get re- Drop a defense. Drop a kicker. Don't play them. Minimal, mm-hmm. most of the time, on average, they're going to get 5 to 10 points for you. And, you know, you know, there's always that one wide receiver or whatever that goes off of 30 points that week. You know, that could be your guy. Uh, in my head, you know, fantasy football is like 75% skill. You know, the draft, picking up players. And the other 25 cents is just a free for all. 25 cents, huh? You're on your own. <laughs> Breaking 25 percent. Is, is that how you did fractions <laughs> you <know>? and percentages <laughs> with money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we learned different in school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, in my, as, as a... My boy Lloyd Christmas would say, so you're telling me there's a chance. There's always a chance, you know? except for me this week, Regan. I have in my dynasty oh, league no. going against Ryan. Ryan is not here. He's uh, busy with family and life stuff, so he couldn't be here tonight. Uh, we're sorry. You have to look at us and not his handsome face. Uh, but he'll be back <laughs> next week. I guarantee it. No, I, I actually, I probably shouldn't guarantee it. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? He's... I bet he's a spy. He's like an undercover spy disappearing like this. Um, Probably started his own podcast. Oh, my God. Us. I bet he did. What would it sure. be? A, Stealing what would dogs. It be a, underwear? Just, Just Haynes. Haynes brand, everything. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so you're saying, like, drop a defense and kicker. Are you saying you're going to leave that slot open? If I have to, and that's the case, and that in you know, say I like I have one team. I have Keenan Allen, Stefan Diggs, Deontay Johnson, mm-hmm. um, 
Pat, uh, what is it? Dak Prescott. I have them all on my bench. I don't have room. Okay. So if I need to grab somebody, I don't know who it may be, but just grab somebody that I can put in there that gives me the best chance of coming out, you know, with a surprising win. That'd be amazing. I know it's very unlikely, but there's always a chance. So yes, I would leave the defensing and kicker place open. I got you. Before I left, you know, a flex. Yeah, right. I got you. Uh, I know a lot of people out there with their leagues, you have to have a legal starting roster. So you have to have those slots full. But you and yeah. I manage leagues. It's it's not like somebody's tanking. They're playing for the future. So as a oh, uh, yeah. sorry, as a commissioner, not a manager. We all manage our teams. But <laughs> our commissioner of the leagues, we manage the leagues. I'm okay with it. If you have to, because you're not going to sacrifice. But say you have somebody silly on your bench, like Gaskin or uh, backup running back and stuff, and you can't drop them for a defense. Okay, if somebody has a complaint about it, that's fine. But it's early enough in the in the year; uh, it's not going to have that too much playoff implications. Everybody has a different opinion. If it's run a different way, you put it up for a vote. That's totally fine. But I, I do agree with you. You don't – because if you drop somebody that's a good player for somebody else to pick up, that could have even bigger implications if a team gets them when they really shouldn't have been dropped. Like, hint, right. hint, Deshaun Watson last year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you picked him up. <laughs> Ouch. I he, did. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we, we'll talk about him in a bit. But uh, – with that, let's get into our, our new segment. I reached out to people on Instagram. Uh, some people had some opinions. Somebody wanted to talk about an offensive lineman for some reason. Like, we do enough of that in our divisional breakdowns early in the year, but <laughs> we were just starting out. But tip, flip, or flop. Regan, run through this segment for us. All righty, guys. So it's real simple. Tip, flip, or flop. Tip is tip your hat to them. You made a great pick. Flip is, you, you know, trade them. See what else you can get. Flip them for something else. And flop is flop them into free agency and get rid of them. Um, I'm going to name five five players, and me and Mac are going to give you our opinion on what we should do with them. Um, usually they are controversial players or up again, injured or free a free agent, IR. Something, something's up with them. Mm. So my first one right here is David Montgomery. Now, he is on IR. He started off the season pretty well. He was amazing last year. Um, he definitely won me a league last year because I traded for him. I looked at his uh, season um, ending games uh, during playoffs. Uh, and <laughs> again, I looked and he has a pretty good uh, oh, well, you know, playoff run mm -hmm. with the Giants and uh, a couple other Seattle bum teams. So, so yeah, week, Minnesota. Yeah, week 15, Minnesota, 16, Seattle, Giants, the 17. And Green yeah, Bay so week not 14. too shabby. Yeah, it's it's setting up kind of like last year, where he was number right. one running, and he's on IR. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to get him pretty low, considering. So yeah, if I don't have him, I would trade for him. Uh, they'll have uh, the Bucks this week, and then San Fran, then Pittsburgh, Ooh. and then they have a bye week, bye week ten. So if you are a David Montgomery manager, you might be struggling. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know in context, but yeah, if I if I have him, I'm holding him. I'm not I'm not gonna flip him because that that schedule matchup. Uh, so tip him, tip my hat to him. Uh, but if I don't have him, definitely yeah. trying to flip for him. All right, I agree. I'm a, I'm a tip tip the hat to him. Uh, if you are gonna flip him, make sure you you put it in that uh, little note section and say, hey, check out his. Uh, season-ending schedule, mm -hmm. might, maybe it gets you a little something else. Uh, the next guy we're going to get into is C.D. Lamb. Uh, you know, he had uh, one good week, two horrible weeks, two good mm -hmm. weeks, one bad week. Uh, that's just how he is. He's, uh, fluctuation is insane with him. Last week, I think he had 11 targets. It was amazing. Um, I, I'm excited about him. I'm tipping my hat and keeping him, I think, you know, season long. Uh, he's going to be better than Amari Cooper. But, you know, he he is a little uh, indecisive when he wants to play properly and get you some good points. So how do you feel, Matt? Uh, I had to trade him for James Robinson and OBJ Ooh. was the 
fill in. But yeah, he had 36 points against New England yeah. uh, last week. He has a bye this week. His playoff schedule, Giants, Washington, and Arizona. And at week 14 leading in is Washington. <sighs> Washington. Uh, I, I kind of I needed the running back. My best running back was Melvin Gordon. And my second running back oh. was Miles Gaskin. So I needed James Robinson. So uh, yeah, I had to and try to bank on Stefan Diggs and Calvin Ridley making their, their comebacks. So uh, I was treading water. So I, I right now, I would hold on to him. I'd tip him. If you had him? If I had yeah. him right now, I would tip him. I actually do in one other league. Okay. But, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be huge uh, points for him at the end of the year. So tip him. I like it. All right, so we'll, we'll run the last three. Right. We'll run through pretty quick. AJ AJ Brown, Tennessee Titans wide receiver. We'll get into him a little bit more in the breakdown, but I I don't know what I want to do with him. Uh, he he looked good this past uh, week. I'm flipping him. I'm flipping him. I'm all set. I think he's okay. consistent. I just I had high hopes for the Titans offense this off season. We'll get into it later in the breakdown. But yep. if you can flip him for something with his name recognition, or hopefully after this week he does really well. Uh, I would flip him. I like it. Uh, next one's uh, Michael Thomas was supposed to come off IR already. He's going to be on there a little bit longer. Uh, who knows how he's going to be with uh, James Winston, but we know how talented he is, and he could be a game changer if you get him paired. You know, say you had Stefan Diggs, you had Michael Thomas on the bench. Imagine stacking them mm-hmm. two in the end of the season. You'd probably be in a pretty good spot, you would think. Um, I I'm actually trying to flip him. I have him in quite a few yeah. leagues uh, with the insurity of knowing how good he's going to be and possibly with his name, you might be able to get a pretty, pretty, pretty nice uh, trade going on. Yeah. You're probably going to have to flip him to somebody who has a winning record, uh, who is willing to take the chance on him. And if you are struggling below 500 right now, you, you better flip him if you can. Uh, hopefully you know your league good... that was in our five point stance five tips from each of us know your league who's a fan of the players or the teams somebody might really like michael thomas that you can that you can flip up for i don't think he's worth holding on to uh he keeps kind of getting pushed back on when he's coming back so yeah too risky that's a good point i actually have him in a five and one league and i'm thinking about keeping him so it shows you where what stance you're at uh with your record. And the last one is Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton, he's been pretty good this year. Um, pretty much their best receiver, except for when Jerry Judy's on the field and he is coming back. Are we uh tipping, flipping, flopping? Uh I I would say after this week he's playing right now. So I would flip him after the bye week, after all these bye weeks, he probably had to hold on to him. Uh hopefully he does well yeah. tonight. Two back to back weeks, he had garbage time. I just I don't have the most faith in their offense. Uh, I would flip them. Yeah, I got nothing on this guy. I, th- I guess I would flip him as well. I'm pretty nervous about I would, them in yeah, general. Yeah, I mean, if you have uh, – if you need running back help, I think this guy, you can – I hope he's not your, your number one. Maybe he's your number two. No. But hopefully you can – I hope Hopefully not. you can flip him. <laughs> I mean, he has. You need something a little bit more consistent. Yeah, he has. He has a pretty favorable schedule, though. Uh, he has no yeah. points so far tonight against Cleveland. But he has Washington, <laughs> Dallas, and Philly. Then a bye. Then his playoff schedule: Cincinnati, Vegas, and Chargers. So, mm. yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm, I changed my mind. Tip him. Flip him. Tip him. Tip him. I'm flipping Tip him still. So. Uh, All righty, that. Finishes up the tip flipper flop. All right, that wraps that up. Appreciate it. Uh, like I mentioned, Haynes is out, so no Haynes is briefs right now. But since he isn't here, we got Regan. Regan, what do you got? Fruit of looms. We gotta get into your looming, <laughs> looming news, or no. you got some nice, uh, comfortable no. Calvin Kleins. <laughs> what are we getting into? <laughs> Sadly, I'm still wearing Hanes. It seems to be the uh, All right. the non-sponsor. Yeah, not our <laughs> unofficial sponsor because it's spelled different for Hanes. But 
Uh, yeah, Haynes' <laughs> briefs, we'll get into yours. Uh, I was just reading Baker Mayfield as a torn labrum in his non-throwing shoulder. Then he broke his humerus. Uh, I don't know where that is, but I hear uh, it's pretty funny. You cornball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I forgot. That's a, that's a uh, long job. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's broken. So he's going to be out for multiple weeks. So be careful. Uh, what else? You should There's not be. much news tonight, but what else do you got here? All right. So we can just jump into this really quick. The... Uh... Uh, by weeks, week eight next week is something to be uh, ready for. Uh, Baltimore and Raiders, uh, they're both on by next week. Be sure to grab, especially like a backup for like Lamar Jackson. I know I have Lamar in one league. I spent a high cap on him. I didn't get a backup. I'll grab somebody mm-hmm. random. So Carson Wentz seems to be getting picked up. I'd grab him. If not, you know, you, uh, maybe we grab Case Keenum, like I mentioned. You know, Baker Mayfield's going to be out. We'll see who they're playing next week. But yeah. Keep that in mind. It is bye week time. Um, trade rumors. Big ones to Sean Watson, as we all know, to Miami, possibly. Who knows? To uh, to Washington. I think that was like a three team trade rumor. Mm-hmm. So we'll. Uh, I, I, we, we know nothing about it. Miami's denying it. So it, it's interesting. So John McClain, I forget who he works Don't for, him. but um, after he. Uh, dealt with Hans Gruber. He's reporting <laughs> the NFL. Nice. And he's a pretty reliable reporter. But the thing is, three-way trade, Washington beat writers. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody knows anything. Uh, Miami reporters, they're denying it, too. They've been doing this all season. I'm sick of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe in Tua oh. as a Miami fan, and I do not want Watson for – Personal reasons, but I just I just want to uh, I want I believe in him, but yeah, it it might it might happen. Would you pick him up in a twelve team league right now? I am trying to get him in a couple yeah. leagues, especially keeper leagues and stuff like that. If I have some IR space, because he's still IR eligible, why not? If he is, yeah, I guess he can do that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess if you're struggling at quarterback. Uh, uh, I'm not, but trade deadlines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. Um, so, yeah, I guess if you want to get Speaking ahead of-, of that. And for a quarterback, I want to go back to Carson Wentz there. After San Fran this week, they have Tennessee, Jets, then Jacksonville. So if you need oh him to fill God, into one of those now. weeks. I know Tom Brady's going to be on a bye, bye week nine, so he'll be facing the Jets then. But Jonathan Taylor might run all over him, so I don't know. We'll have to get into that. But uh, Carson Wentz can be a good streamer for you to get ahead of. All right, and then then that last bit of news is just the NFL trade deadline. That's uh, November second. Mm-hmm. Um, so right after it's the Tuesday after Week Eight. So just keep that in mind. Some people might be moving the next week. This this coming up week. So um, kind of an exciting time. So we'll see what happens. Sounds good, man. Uh, and that finishes That's the enough. news. I was going to say, I don't, Regans, no, there's really whatever. not much news. It's all injury news. We'll touch those Correct. in the matchups. I just want to get that to some people to let them know. Uh, but you can follow our socials at Just a Tip FFP. We'll keep you updated on those injuries and other news as well. We try to stay active on there. Go ahead and comment if you have some questions about stuff. Slide in our DMs. Be much appreciated uh, to interact with us. Keep us in check. Be great. Uh, <laughs> so with that, we'll get into AFC Week 7 matchups. Just a reminder, Bills, Cowboys, Jaguars, Chargers, Vikings, and Steelers are all on by this week. It's pretty rough, uh, especially quarterbacks gone, uh, top-tier running backs. <laughs> Najee oh. Harris, Dalvin Cook, Austin Ackler, James Robinson, Zeke Elliott. Yeah, you're going to be... Gonna be need, need Every team. <laughs> so, luckily, there are some players out there, and we'll, we might have to do some deep tips for you. But first matchup. <laughs> nice. Just, <laughs> just some girthy ones for you. Just a... <laughs> they, they have potential. <laughs> they have potential. Stop while you're ahead. <laughs> ahead. Nice. Uh, 
First matchup here on the dock. We got Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens. So Cincinnati is four and two. Baltimore five and one. One o'clock game. Over under forty seven. Ravens are favored by six and a half points. Um, for the Bengals, you're starting Jamar Chase. Uh, I've already said how much wrong I am. T Higgins, he's still he's still their top red zone target. So I'm starting him. Joe Mixon, obviously starting. Joe Burrow, you can stream this week. He's been doing pretty mm. well. Um, but Mixon, I want to touch on this. I went back with every game that he played against the Baltimore Ravens. He's averaging around 12 points per game against them. It's not that great. But hopefully with their passing attack now and a better quarterback that he's usually played with, hopefully it'll be better for him and open it up more. Uh, they're getting him involved in the passing game as well. Uh, the wide receiver group, like I was saying, Higgins, most targeted in the red zone. Chase is a big playmaker. Start both of them. I'm trying to start, uh, trying to avoid starting Tyler Boyd. But say you need him. He has done well versus the Ravens at times. He has scored over 20 points. But that's not when he had Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. It went with them <laughs> as well. But his average isn't good. It's just 9.6 points per game. And like I said, Joe Burrow's been doing Pretty all right as of late, averaging 25.5. So you could do worse. I would definitely stream him. Could oh, you yeah. stream him over Tannehill going against Kansas City? Uh, so Baltimore Ravens. That, I guess that just depends on uh, – I, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think I if, would. You, Actually, if you need this – So I would take Tannehill over. You would take Tannehill. Right. I think if you need the safe play, I would go with Burrow, uh, pick him up and play. But if you need, if okay. you need the high – scoring and you're hoping Tannehill will get into his matchup later on. Uh, high scoring hopefully with him. Uh, Winston versus Seattle on Monday night. Would you start Winston or Burrow? Burrow. Definitely Burrow. Burrow. All right. Uh, the rest are pretty much rookie QBs I have to choose from. So, uh, <laughs> right. Like I said, I'm sitting Tyler Boyd. I'm sitting Usama, the tight end. I, I, mm-hmm. I I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe you can. There's only like 13 games this week, so maybe you have to start him. Oh. Good luck. I'm sorry. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, anything you want to touch on the Bengals there? No, I, I'm a, I am nervous about Tyler Boyd mm-hmm. and Joe Burrow doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't do anything for me this week. But with numbers mm-hmm. down, you know, I guess you could start him. No problem. I do have to start Tyler Boyd because CD Lamb's on a bye. Gotcha. And that, that's this is going to happen to everyone. And then in, everyone's going to have somebody they don't want to play. Right. But if you have a choice, Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd or Robbie Anderson, <laughs> Tyler Boyd. <Me>. All right. <laughs> uh, we'll get in. We'll get into the next guy here. But for the Ravens, starting Lamar Jackson, Marquise Brown. You're starting Mark Andrews, who's chomping oh, yeah. at the heels of Kelsey, it's... nipping at the heels there. Um, of being the number one tight end on the year, so does he overtake him? Time will tell. Their <laughs> obvious starts. I wanted to discuss Rashad Bateman here. He's the rookie. Just yeah. came off his uh, core surgery uh, during the off season, and then or during the preseason rather, and he had to sit out for the right. first few games. He had seven targets last week, uh, so he's a worthy flex option this week. They do have a buy. After this one, I, I wouldn't hold on to him if he doesn't do well this game. I don't think, unless you're in a much deeper league. Uh, but they they do have a, uh, a tough schedule with Andrews and Brown demanding the targets, and there's not enough passes to go around, and they're going to run the ball more, as Harbaugh has been saying. I, I don't know. I'm going to see after this game, and if he gets seven targets, or I'll say six-plus targets, I would keep him. If they're gonna try to get him more involved, yeah. say he does three, nah, I'm all set. I don't think he's worth holding on into the buy. Uh, but I have to start him in my flex this week as well. What were you saying? Yeah, no, I was saying against Cincinnati. I think that's actually probably a good call. I'd say probably like six targets. But I agree. This this is what Baltimore has wanted. They've wanted mm-hmm. to get rid of the run game and be able to air it out a little bit and. Lamar Jackson has thrown for the most yards he ever they, has. So they spent a first round pick on him. Uh, right? Exactly. Yep. 
So it's working. And he was possibly going to be the number one taken. So I see a lot of uh, – I really like Rashad. Oh, I do too. And I'm, I've been stashing him for a little bit. So um, the target count might not be there for me, but – and. I, that's you know I think that league that I'm I have him in is a deeper league so um, I'm definitely well, I definitely am excited about yeah it. I I, I want to see more uh, this week though I mean if they keep him heavily involved yeah. like that I can I would hold on to him uh, which of these running backs do you want to start though <laughs> Le'Veon Bell or Devontae Freeman they are both gross is, I'm surprised at this eight percent roster in Yahoo leagues that that's it that's it and I, I checked that today. Wow. And I'm like, with uh, everybody out on by, nobody wants these guys? I, I'm a 100% starting Freeman. Uh, I think I'm going to start him Bell. over Gaskin. Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely. He got a lot of work last week. He did. With uh, Murray getting hurt, he's questionable to right. play. Sidney uh, Sammy Watkins, not going to not gonna play him. Yep. Yeah, with Rashad Bateman in. All set. All right. Uh, anybody else on the Ravens you want to discuss? Not discuss. I'm not playing Bell at all. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm still wait and see that he'll go into a bye week. So if you pick him up to play him, you're dropping him into the bye week anyway. Um, mm-hmm. But Devontae Freeman, I think, probably has the most potential. And then keep an eye on. If Murray doesn't play. I'm sorry. If Murray doesn't play. If Murray play. doesn't play. And then if Murray doesn't play as well, keep an eye on Tyson Williams. They're uh, the guy who's yep. on a healthy scratch, but he's their fastest, and he needs to hold on to the ball. So maybe he's learned. Maybe he got some uh, sticky uh, substance on his gloves. <laughs> he can hold on to it. <laughs> so uh, who who are you picking in this game? Oh, Ravens, definitely. Ravens, yeah they they've been uh, they've been lighting it up. Um, I'm probably going. Some some of the Bengals. Bengals have looked pretty good. They've had some tough wins though. Yeah, I just. Coming down to the I'm wire. loving the Mark Andrews Lamar Jackson connection right yeah. now. It's going to be a good one. Um, reality yeah. game, maybe not fantasy production, but uh, <laughs> correct. Probably just a couple players out of this pool. But I'm looking forward to this game. Uh, I'm not looking forward to the next one. So you go ahead and take it. Ah, <laughs> this is your team. So we got the uh, Atlanta Falcons two and three versus the. Ever so mighty Miami Dolphins at one and five. I just didn't want to say the record. I'll take it here. Uh, Forty-seven and a half point <laughs> over under. Atlanta favored by two and a half. Miami's gross, so we won't. Wow. Hopefully, we don't have to spend too much time on them. But Atlanta coming off their bye week. Kyle Pitts had a great game over in Britain. Don't start it <laughs> on the pitch. <laughs> Catching the ball, looking marvelous out there in the end zone, finally. Tally to score. Anyway, Cordell Patterson, you can start him for sure. Mike Davis, you can start running back. Matt Ryan, I think he's a good streamer. Calvin Ridley, he better have a boom game, breakout game. He's back. He needs to. He had some personal issues. Maybe he just needs to step away. I hope he, he's good now in the right mindset, and he, he lights it up. Uh, I have Stefan Diggs on a bye, so I, I need him to step it up for me. Um, so, yeah, like I said, can stream Matt Ryan. Miami's defense has not looked good. Uh, not as good as last season. And if Byron Jones is out, uh, corner for him. Especially, uh, if, it'll be an especially good day for the Atlanta Falcons offense. Russell Gage, I want to mention, he's coming back off the IR. Any interest in flexing him? No, but I wouldn't mind stashing yeah. him if you can. Yeah. I'd like to see if Atlanta can kind of turn around their season. If you do need a receiver, he, he's worth looking into. I mean, but you're looking at if you have Robbie Anderson going in your flex, yeah. Miles Gaskin type of play. Uh, that Yeah, he's a low yeah, end. Uh, I, I'd rather not. Um. Yeah, I mean it's pretty straightforward who you're starting for Atlanta, right? Oh, yeah. easy. Yeah, this Pitts Patterson. You said, it. yeah, I'm honestly starting everyone. If, if right. that's, that's kind I'm of saying. self-explanatory. You could get lucky uh, if you if say you say you have a lot of people on by and your opponent doesn't. And you need a big play type of thing. Uh, Russell Gage, you could do worse. Desperation. Go ahead, throw him in. For the Dolphins, 
pretty much just two guys, three guys I want to start talking about. Mike Kosicki. He's number eight tight end on the year. I have him projected as Magic the number, number eight. seven. So he's, he's staying on track. And I have a bet with Ryan. <laughs> he would do three slots better than Goddard, Dallas Goddard, for the Eagles. And he's at number 16 right now. So I wanted to rub that in Ryan's face when he was here, but he's not. So I uh, hope you're listening. <laughs> no, he will be. He has nothing else better to do. He'll be listening. I'm beating you, Ryan. Be nervous. You're going to owe me. Oh god! I don't know what we bet on, but or what we used to bet. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jalen Waddle definitely he's a must start this week. Oh yeah, uh, Tua I think he can he can stream even with all this noise yeah. going on. Hopefully he goes and lights it up and be like, "You want to fucking trade me?" Yeah, I swore. I'm pissed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeez. <I'm getting> <laughs> uh, Joe Shad, journal for the Palm Beach Post. He was reporting how Brian Flores says, "Quote: We need to run the ball." More. End quote. Maybe you should have there some you better play calling or a better offensive line. Or maybe some better defensive plays as well. You're supposed to be a defensive genius and you're not doing it. I'm mad at Flores, if you can't tell. <laughs> so hit the bye weeks. I noticed. In one league, I held on to Gaskin. But Devontae Freeman is out there. Do so I drop Devontae uh-huh. Freeman for Gaskin? Or... You need him this week? I need somebody in my flex. It's either Robbie Anderson, Gaskin, or Devontae Freeman. Uh, right? Gross. That's what I have to deal with, people. Probably play. I'm sure you have to deal with something similar. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I know. <laughs> it, I, I it, go move Gaskin, it, I think. On. Uh, but I did hold on to him because I didn't want somebody else to play him, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has the potential. He just needs the opportunity. That's the exactly. problem. He has the talent. Speaking of opportunity, Gesicki. You don't like his opportunity? Yeah, man. I'm j- I just want you to be weird. Mm-hmm. You know, Gesicki, so he, he's been killing it. 16 snaps from the tight end position. Guess what? He's a tight end. Mm-hmm. He's playing all his snaps at wide yep. receiver. He's been killing it. He's running all the routes that Tua loves. It, their connection's actually been awesome. What makes me nervous is Devontae Parker is now practice limited the past two days. He comes back. Does he start taking away from Gasicki? Not making him, you know, not a, a, a tight end eight, but a tight end 10, 11. He, he'll be a number one tight end, so you are starting up. But is it limited? No, I, I think he'll make it into the top five this week. He's their, he's their best player besides Waddle. Oh, Jalen Waddle. I was going to say Waddle. Uh, actually, no, I don't know. More experience with Kasicki. Yeah, it's debatable. Uh, we just take experience over the rookie type thing. But they need to give him the ball more. I'm not worried about Parker stealing anything from him. Um, Tua, no like dude. I said, good stream. <laughs> Atlanta did shut down the, this amazing talent, Zach Wilson, <laughs> and Daniel Jones. <laughs> Would you start? Whoa. Would you start Tua over those two? Obviously, right? Yes. Mac Jones. Yes. No. You would start Mac Jones playing the Jets over Tua. Over Tua. Yes. He's playing a more we competitive game against Atlanta. Playing the Jets. What? They're just gonna run all over the Jets. We'll get into them next. But all right, ballsy Heineke. Ugh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, he had a he had a dug game last week, but uh, Jimmy G. did. Like that. That's your other choices here. <laughs> I'm not playing Jimmy G. <laughs> I'm telling Tua. I think Tua. He did 23 points last week. 23, 25 points. So he did pretty well. Um, oh, I'm not saying he's not. I just said the other guys probably going to have him for a one week start. I think he could do worse. Atlanta's yeah. defense isn't any good either. No, I agree. Uh, but, yeah, all right, I think we talked too much about them. <laughs> Agreed? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, see what's next. Oh, wait. <laughs> the oh, wait, who are you picking? Or... Atlanta or Miami? Atlanta. Yeah, I'll probably go to Atlanta, too. They have, they have one more win. Um, um, <laughs> probably go to Atlanta. All right, next matchup. Wow. What do we have? Some fan you are. All right, we have, ooh. This team's, this team's been looking good, real good. Yeah? Uh, New York Jets, oh, yeah. one in four. Hey, uh, all sarcasm. They, they did lose last week. <laughs> they got really lucky. <laughs> they were on a bye. <laughs> Very lucky. 
Uh, I was actually thinking of Miami. Uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> they lost. They the lost to Jacksonville. <laughs> oh man! All right, so we got the one and four New York Jets versus the two and four, sadly, Patriots. Not that much. At one o'clock. Uh, yeah, over under forty three. <laughs> Pats by seven. I definitely take that. Uh, Pats held them to. I forget what they had, but they had four picks. It was a crazy game. Yeah. So uh, for New York Jets, it's simple enough. I think I'm going to start Jameson Crowder. And because of bye weeks, if you do have to start a running back, uh, Michael Carter, he didn't have much. I think he had 59 yards the last time he played. Uh, but now he's he's starting to get more of the offense, more of the snaps. So if you have to, you can uh, you can play him, I guess. the I think the Pats allowed 152 rushing yards the last time they played. Uh, and 210 passing yards. So they didn't let up much for passing, let up a lot for rushing. I think the Pats are kind of fine with that, slowing the game down. They're going to be up anyways. They will let the Jets slow down the game as much as they mm-hmm. want. Um, the only difference here from the last game is Jameson Crowder and his ability to extend some of the plays with his quick uh, catches. Kind of like if you know a lot of Patriots players uh, know Edelman would always get the third down uh, catches. Conversion, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Setting exactly. the drive. So Jameson Car- Exactly. I got you. Yep. So giving more chances to Michael Carter and, and Jameson Carter himself. So that that's the only guys I'm really going to play. And the one that comes up to sitting is Corey Davis. Now, if you held on to him with the last bye week or you picked him up, you might, you might have to play him. But he did not do well. They're going to shut down the best receiver, who is Correct. Corey Davis. So, yeah, I don't have the most faith in that. But something to touch on, Jameson Crowder didn't play against him last, but the guy he did was Braxton right. Berrios, where he was filled in for Jameson Crowder. He had 11 targets, and 7 receptions, 73 yards. Uh, so look for Jameson Crowder filling in for him. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to get across, yeah. so I'm glad you had those notes. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I I was because I'm, I'm yeah. going to be playing Jameson Crowder, so <laughs> that was how to look into go. it. Uh, that's why I thought of it. And then I mentioned it after that game, how Michael Carter was averaging over five yards a carry, or the whole entire Jets offense was over five, ca- uh, five yards per carry or per rush against the Patriots, and they got away from running the ball. I think they're going to learn. Or maybe. Hopefully they learn from their mistakes, <laughs> and if they're smart enough and keep running the ball against them like they were supposed to, set it up the play action. So yeah, Michael Carter, a lot of people, I don't think we mentioned him in our waiver pickups. That's my fault. I, I, I already had him rostered, so, so yeah, I, same. I didn't think of that. But uh, if he's out there, pick him up, and you can start him. Definitely. And we're obviously benching Zach Wilson. Yeah, he shouldn't even be rostered. Through four picks he last time. He shouldn't even be rostered. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, and then to the Patriots, uh, the most disappointing team <laughs> lately. <laughs> uh, you're starting uh, – Damian Harris should have a great game. Jacoby Myers seems to be the only productive wide receiver that with consistency. Um, and to Henry, has been really turning it on, so you can play him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, definitely. And then Damian Harris has come off the injury report for the first time in, like, four weeks. So that's obviously a good sign. So he's definitely a go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thankfully. Yeah. So, Mac, you got a question on so, Andre Stevens? Yeah. Is he, is he a worthy flex asking for a friend of mine who, or a friend of mine's cousin's sister-in-law? Do you wow. start Ramondre hey. Stevenson, who got some passing work, got a few receptions uh, last week against Dallas? It, all right. Yeah, I. They're favored. I'm sorry. They're favored by seven points. Sell it. They should be able to run over this team. And if Damian Harris, he, I thought he would be on the injury report when I was writing these notes yesterday, and he came off of it, so I guess he'll be good to go. But I'm expecting him to kill the Jets. And I expect Ramon J. Stevenson to get some garbage time. Maybe garbage time touchdown. I mean, would you throw him in over, I mean, A.J. Dillon? Like, I'm trying to think of other backups that you might have to play. That's a good comparison right there. Yeah. I would play Stevenson. Yeah. 
I think I think last week uh, I think he impressed the team. He, he carved out a role in in a big game. He had catches downfield. He had ru- rushes. Uh, he was actually a part of the offense. So I definitely think he could be an all right flex. Mm-hmm. Um, you know he's gonna get uh, you know his his floor is like five points, but his ceiling could be you know sixteen. You know with the garbage time with a, a rushing touchdown and a couple catches. So yeah, um, but I I think AJ AJ Dillon has the same thing though. He's not getting any catches, zero to be <laughs> exact, mm-hmm. and uh, he's splitting with uh, Jones. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I got a I got a decision. My friend friend's cousin sister in law has a decision to make. Oh, uh, <laughs> liar! I know. <laughs> I know. It's me. It's me. Um. All right. City Johnny Smith. Easy yeah. decision. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't pick him up, but I do need a tight end. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Good luck with that. I know. We'll get into a couple maybe in the mm-hmm. NFC breakdown. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm taking the Pats, obviously. Yeah, same. All right, let me jump into the next one. Uh, this one should be a, a lot funner game to watch. We got Hopefully. the Kansas City at <laughs> su- surprising 3-3 three and three versus the surprising 4-2 and two Tennessee Titans. Thank you very much, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, the ga- game's at one fifty-seven point five over. Yep. <laughs> Chiefs by five and a half. Wow! Just wait till you see the That's... spread in our NFC matchups. It is insane. But yeah, is it? I uh, can't wait to see yeah. it. So Kansas City are obviously going to start Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, uh, Nico Hardman, and I say this because Tyreek Hill is actually on the injury report and hasn't practiced all week, I believe. Uh, limited. So, yeah, I think he was limited today. But I don't think he practiced. Today oh, was it yesterday? Then I can't remember. Uh, let me look. Yeah, let me look. Maybe that's quick. what it was. Yep. And then Travis Kelsey keeps popping up on the injury report. Definitely makes us nervous. I, I think Mac agrees. Um, ooh, Mac, you want to trade him in Dynasty? Uh, well, I am a contender, and ooh. um. Travis Kelsey, he just signed the contract in the offseason, but with these injuries, it's getting me kind of nervous. And I have Gesicki as my second tight end, who's going into a contract year, who is doing pretty well. I mean, do I capitalize? Do I trade him after this season or during the season? Say I'm like starting to get knocked out of playoff contention. Or do I do it now hmm. to somebody who thinks that they're going to make a run. I don't know. Just trying to think, is is it worth trying to, to dangle him out there, trying to get some uh, interest? Yeah, he is. I think he's 32 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's still probably going to finish as the tight end one like he has for the past, like, seven years. I would try to trade him at, after the season. Your contender, I think you need that now. Uh, you should always try to go for the win when they're already on your team. I mean, I traded – to Ryan traded him to me. I had to trade. Uh, I had to look up the trade, but um, pretty pretty penny for him. So I, I need him to get it for me. Yeah, I'm just I'm just nervous with his injuries uh, showing up there, popping up there, and then I go back to Tyreek Hill. He was present, but he didn't practice. That's what it was. So he right, was that's... there. So we're both kind of right. Yeah, exactly. So I just I think there's just a mistake. They're like, all right, you don't you don't need to practice. It's fine. <laughs> okay, um, and then uh, you actually brought this one out, Darrell Williams. Obviously, uh, yeah. I, he's been killing it. <laughs> Honestly, I think they're going to have a hard decision between cutting his reps when uh, Ch comes back. So <laughs> uh, he's been he looked good. Yeah, he's been last week. he's been doing better. That's for sure. Um, yeah, full full go on him. He was great in his starting debut. Uh, they'll need him to do it again. He'll be at, I think, top 12 running back this week. Uh, yeah, with all the with all the uh, racks that are out, definitely. Yeah, he had 24 points last week against Washington. Yeah, and wrecked it. Tennessee, similar defense. So, Actually, yeah. Horrible <laughs> kinda, secondary. Kinda. Good line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, and then you're not do no, I, I saw something, I think it was on, uh, Twitter or whatever, but somebody had Josh Gordon in their lineup. Don't do it. He had zero everything last week. Oh gosh. Yeah. No, he shouldn't even be so, rostered. 
Who's doing that? No, not at this point. Call him out by name. What are you doing? <laughs> Speaking of calling him out by name, Tennessee, Derek Henry. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this guy is amazing. He's literally, I think he has over 200 rushing yards more than the next guy this year. He's uh, uh, ranked number one above and beyond. Yeah, he's the uh, he's his point leader over every quarterback. <laughs> that, yeah. It's Wild. ridiculous. Um, th- so, th- obviously, that's our number one starter for Tennessee. Then we have Ryan Tannehill, A.J. Brown. And the thing I want to bring up about A.J. Brown is I was curious if uh, the last Bills game was really like his – a breakout game. He did nothing in the second, the first half, and came out and had. Uh, I forget. I forget what he had in the second half, but he ended with uh, nine targets, seven catches, ninety-one yards, and kept them in that game. And they needed him, and he did a great job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the funny thing is, I heard that he was out with an illness last week, and supposedly the rumor is he had a food poisoning, uh, got food poisoning from Chipotle. And he actually mentioned the name, like, on Twitter. And I was like, that's uh, kind of aggressive, throwing that name out there on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not going to get sponsored by them, that's for sure. Nope, I don't think he wants anything to do with them anymore, uh, though. <laughs> maybe not. I mean, I would have been like, hey, got food poisoning. Like, uh, we'll call it even if you let me sponsor. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so how do you feel about Tannehill? I'm I'm waiting to, for waivers to clear and pick him up because I don't want to start Heineke. I'm going to start Tannehill, and I have uh, Josh Allen on bye week. <laughs> so yep. I, I don't have any backup quarterbacks, so I'm trying to trying to wait for him to pick him up. Uh, sorry, I was looking up at what I traded for Kelsey to go back to that. Trade with Ryan. Oh, that's all good. I traded Jarvis Landry, Jordan Howard, and my – First round pick, and I got Kelsey. I think it was pretty worth it. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Definitely. I, I don't think. Uh, well, you're going to be able to turn him around for more. So. And I, I did another I trade with Hertz and DJ Chark and all this stuff. So it, it kind of oh, evened out with Ryan. It was kind of like a twofer type thing. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I but did. yeah, Tannehill. Uh, sorry, I just want to mention this. His TD regression yeah. is with Hertz. What was hurting him, or what is hurting him, rather? Um, my projections this preseason were partly correct. Like I said, they they brought in Julio Jones because they're going to throw more. They are. He's like averaging three more attempts per game and throwing. Uh, he has more. There's more receiving yards, more passing yards. Obviously, if there's more receiving yards, uh, but the touchdowns just are being robbed by Derrick Henry. Got a fun fact for yeah. you, Regan. Uh oh. Do you know? Did you know? Henry has more TDs, rushing TDs, that is, than the Saints, Packers, Vikings, Steelers, Panthers combined. That's pathetic. Right? <laughs> I mean, That's they're, they're, getting, absurd. they're getting some receiving touchdowns, but that rushing attack, I mean, I knew they were trying to set up the play action, but damn, like, he's just. That one, what was it, his first handoff against Buffalo? He just cruises down the field. Oh, yards my God. Down. Love that. Yeah, ridiculous. So uh, I think yeah. Tannehill He's... is a viable stream this week against Kansas City. Yep. I know it didn't work out for Heineke this past week. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to start him. Yeah, definitely. And then back to Henry, mm-hmm. averaging 130 yards. One uh, averaging one point six touchdowns a game, I think he's had two games with <laughs> like three. Uh, he's several games with three, I think. Just uh, absurd. Something ridiculous. I didn't look him up because he's an obvious start. <laughs> uh, oh, and then some. Yeah, uh, is he the number one pick next year in drafts? In my eyes, yeah, yeah. He's too consistent. Uh, the thing is, we, we talked about this, which I, I just want to. Pat myself in the back as I ranked him the highest between us three. You did. At three. Uh, and I was still lo- low on him, apparently. Now, it's week six, mm-hmm. but we already see McCaffrey's down. Dallas, uh, Dalvin Cook's already missed two games. Derek Henry, reliable as hell. And he is 
a work. <laughs> he gets a heavy workload. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he had them in a. I forget which breakdown we did, but he's had the most carries every single year he's, by far. Yeah, he's projected to go well over 400 this year uh, again. Oof. And it's like, we, how that is he going to keep that up? That's why I thought they were bringing in the receivers to pass more, which they are. But he, they're just running a lot more plays, I guess. So, uh, yeah, good for him. <laughs> Poor keep guy. Up. But, yeah. Uh, going back to Dynasty, if you are not a contender right now and you have Derrick Henry, you should be trading him, bringing a haul. I'm talking multiple first oh, round yeah. picks, uh, prospects. Uh, trade him to a team that you think is not going to be there in the playoffs after this year. Uh, so definitely, like 2023, you want to have those high picks. So sell him to somebody that's selling out for this year, uh, for sure. I like that. Good All right, point. we sitting. So we sitting Julio Jones. So. What came up on the injury report is A.J. Brown is actually questionable and Julio Jones is probable. Oh, okay. um, so I don't know. That means nothing about for Julio Jones. Who they knows? still do probable? <laughs> I, it it might have been like a questionable. I just know yeah. uh, they were saying that Julio Jones was more likely to play yeah. over A.J. Brown, okay. which makes me nervous because A.J. Brown had an illness, which mm. supposedly was food poisoning, and mm-hmm. he's questionable. So... I am still sitting him because he's not consistent, not consistent. But that catch that got deflected mm-hmm. and caught on the sideline—did you see that? I did. Absurd I did. concentration. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, I just I'm still mind blown. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Yeah, definitely <laughs> look it up. I'll, I'll tweet it out. Um, so I have to start Allen Robinson or Julio Jones. <laughs> I think I'm going Julio because it's against Kansas City. But yeah. then it's like yeah, it's tough. it's the Bucks that Robinson's playing against. I uh, I don't know. They both have horrible secondaries. Or <laughs> do I just start them both? <laughs> Who are you benching? <laughs> uh, I have Calvin Ridley going. I know that. Oh uh, yeah, you got to play him by by far. Definitely. Uh, uh, yeah. Who else on, do I got? on that I note, Diggs on are... by. Oh, so I have Devontae Smith. T. Higgins. I'm playing both of them over these guys. Play both of them? All right. So then, yeah, I put Julio in just... my flex. So Calvin Ridley, yeah, Devontae so... Smith, T. Higgins, then in my flex, 10-team uh, league. So, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so I put this note on there, Mac. It's mm-hmm. They're both on. They're both questionable, both yeah. on the injury yeah, report. Limited, so yeah. whoever's looking better. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much what I would go with. Uh, well, Robinson is looking good. Just Justin Fields is missing him wide open. Did you see that still frame of like him, like nobody around him, down the middle? I did not. Yeah, and Justin Fields oh. just can't see him. That's the problem. It's the uh, worst. I don't know. It's the coaching. I'm going to blame it on the coaching there. Do it. They're not setting <laughs> Justin Fields up properly because he has the talent. We've seen it. I. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the NFL and just rookie quarterbacks are, are struggling this year. That's for sure. Uh, anything else on this matchup besides the winner? You going Titans again? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wait. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No. I don't know. Yeah. All right, I'll go. Derrick Henry, man, is the game. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm like, I don't know. It might be. No, I'll go. I'll go Titan. Uh, no, I'll go Kansas City. I'll go Chiefs. <laughs> Same. Same. All right. Uh, anything wrap- else? You good? Well, that wrapped up the AFC. Oh, man. We went on longer than I thought we would. But with that, we want to say thank you Always guys do. for listening. I know. We, we last so long with our tips. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hate your face. Huh? That was a good one. Okay. <laughs> I said I hate your face. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> I, was trying to, I was trying to cube up this, but way too late. Uh, you, you can follow our socials at Just a Tip FFP. Uh, interact with us if you have any start sit questions that we did not get to. Uh, feel free to hit us up, and we'll discuss it and then get back to you. And you can like, subscribe to the video on YouTube. Uh, it'd be much appreciated if you share our tips with your friends and family and find us on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon podcasts. Uh, thank you very much, guys, uh, for supporting us. 
a little over seven months in. Uh, it's it's been a grind. It's been fun. Uh, hopefully, we're helping you guys out with our tips. Uh, we've been helping ourselves, that's for sure. Uh, Mister Six and Definitely. Ellen, pick a winner over here. Champs here. Yeah, we'll All see. Right, a little we'll aggressive this week. So, <laughs> got anything for oh, the leftovers no. here, Regan? I don't. I just want to talk about that pick in Tennessee and how I had to go back and forth. And I was freaking out because it was huh? like, oh, it's too much. And, mm-hmm. of course, my, I get home, my wife's sleeping, so I'm sitting there on my phone in bed mm-hmm. <laughs> just looking. You stayed up for the whole night, huh? Oh, of course I did. Yeah, I nice. couldn't go to bed. Nice. I was freaking out. And then I couldn't go to sleep because I went 6-0 <laughs> and in one pick em. Yeah, it, it's exciting, man. I had, I had one fantasy matchup where I had Kamara's like, breakout rookie year, and – he had McCaffrey, I want to say. It was a Panthers-Eagles matchup, and we just kept dueling back and forth. I win by, like, half oh. a point. And I'm like, I have to be up in, like, three hours for work, man. Like, we got to have this <laughs> guys. Like, come on. Uh, but, yeah, that, I know the feeling. Nerve-wracking game. That's, that's fantasy football. I love that. It is. It is. Uh Tweet at us. Where's my outro music? Now, I was gonna, I'm bringing it up. Tweet at us. Uh, what your most stressful fantasy pick up money line betting game, whatever it may be. Uh, we love to hear about it. Tell us that story. Uh, and if you have any any good bets for this weekend, it's a kind of a, Ooh, a strange I like card. I don't really think I want to do much. Uh, besides, we'll get into it with the NFC spreads. And let you know yeah, what I'm thinking. Bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Two touchdowns, bad. That's how. <laughs> yeah. What? And they're. I'm excited now. <laughs> they're enticing. They're enticing. So. Uh, no, I'm not going there. I'll go here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a mob joke of enticing, but never mind. A little too dicey. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Good night, everybody. Hey guys.